Hi everyone, welcome for this live quiz on reflection at curved surfaces. So we'll be looking at reflection of light for spherical mirrors. That is the concave and convex mirror. And I'm going to make the concepts super easy for you. So make sure to watch the entire video and we are going to be looking at some very, very important questions on this topic. So guys, this will be a great revision for this uh, uh, topic for you on concave and convex mirror. And we are going to be looking at the reflection on these curved surfaces. That is the reflection of light. All right, guys. So hope you uh, all of you are excited for this class. And as you guys know, we have this website, manochaacademy.com. So guys, do check it out. We have these full courses for physics, chemistry and maths for CBSE class 10, for CBSE class 9 and ICSE class 9. And these courses are on big discounts right now. So do check them out. They are full courses and do share it also with your friends. And guys, I'm excited to announce that because a lot of you gave feedback that you guys want Hindi classes also. So we've started uh, more live classes on our Manocha Academy Hindi channel. So just yesterday we had a class for Mano on our channel Manocha Academy Hindi. So if you guys are interested, you can also subscribe uh, to that channel in addition to this one. Okay, guys. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button for this channel, please hit it right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss a single live class or the videos that we upload. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Great to see. Good evening to all of you. Sorry if I can't take everyone's name here, but make sure you do uh, subscribe to our channel. So Manocha Academy in this channel, I'll be taking the English classes and we also have Manocha Academy Hindi. All right, so let's go ahead and begin this quiz. I'm Sandeep Manocha and let's start this quiz, guys. So here's the first question. The back shiny part of the spoon, what is it? A plane mirror, a concave mirror, a convex mirror, or none of these? What do you guys think? Awesome, come on. I want everybody to try here. So the back shiny part of a spoon, so guys, next time you're eating your uh, lunch or dinner, please, you know, pick up your spoon, right? So pick up the spoon and check. You know that the spoon has a curved surface and a shiny spoon is a reflecting surface, right guys? So if you take a look at a spoon, you know that it, it has a curved surface on the front and the back side. And this question is asking the back shiny part of the spoon, okay? So this is the front shiny part that I'm seeing here. And guys, this is the back portion, okay? So what type of mirror it is? And the best way you can check, you know, by looking at yourself. So look at yourself in the back portion of the spoon. That is this one, right? This is the back portion of the spoon. So what will it be, guys? Come on. Is it a concave mirror, a convex or a plane mirror? So guys, the answer cannot be plain because we are talking about a curved mirror, right? You know the spoon is curved in shape. So plane mirror cannot be the answer. So which one is it? So if you pick up the spoon and see yourself, like I'm looking at myself here, right? So guys, do this experiment after this class. Look at yourself in the spoon and no matter where you move it, you'll see that you're getting a upright and diminished image. But if you turn the spoon, right? If you look at the front part, you can see an inverted version of yourself, right? So in the front part, there's an inverted version. That means it's a concave mirror. Right? There's an inverted image in the front part and in the back portion, there's always a diminished and upright image, right? And it is a convex mirror and you can also feel it. You can see that it is curved outwards. It's bulging outwards. So excellent guys. Correct answer here is the back portion of the spoon is a convex mirror. So please remember that the front part, the front part is a concave mirror because it curves inwards, right? And the back portion, the back part of the spoon, which bulges outwards is a convex mirror. Okay, excellent, excellent. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button right now. And let's move on to our next question. What type of image does this mirror form when it is used as a shaving mirror? So as you guys saw in my thumbnail, you know, I had this picture where I'm shaving. I'm using this mirror, right? Which is used, called the shaving mirror. So what type of image is formed? Is it a real image? Is it a virtual image? A real and virtual image or none of these? What do you guys think? So come on, I want all of you to try. Excellent to see the response. So a lot of you are saying B here. Some of you think it's A. Okay. Some of you think it's C, real and virtual. 
So great guys, come on, please try. And doesn't matter if your answer is right or wrong. I want everybody to participate in this quiz, okay? So what is the answer here? So please take a look at this mirror, right? So I'm using a curved mirror here, right? Because you can see that uh, while I'm shaving uh, is a magnified image of my face, right? My face is not that big, but when you see it in the mirror here, it's a larger face, okay? So what type of image is formed in this case when you're using it as a, right? So first of all, what type of mirror is this? So what type of mirror is the uh, shaving mirror? Do you guys know? What type of mirror is it? Okay, great, great to see the answers. So this mirror, you know, which is used as a shaving mirror, it is a concave mirror, right? And when you're using it as a concave mirror, very good. A lot of you are saying concave mirror, right? So when you use it as a concave mirror, you go close to it. And when you go close to it, it you know, it gives a magnified image. So it's easier to shave or it's used as a makeup mirror, right? So it's easier to apply makeup. So now what, what is the type of image formed here? Come on guys. And the answer is very easy. If you take a look at the my image here in this uh, concave mirror, is my image upright or is it inverted? Okay. In this case, guys, don't, we are not talking about the general concave mirror case. Some of you guys are getting confused by that. In this case, in the concave mirror, right? In this, in this case of the shaving mirror, is my image upright or is it inverted? Clearly guys, you can see my image is upright, right? My face is not upside down. It is upright here. It is not inverted. So all of you can see that the image here, right? My image is upright. Because it is not inverted, right? And which type of images are upright? Virtual or real? Come on guys, can you tell me? Excellent, excellent, right? I see now a lot of you are saying virtual, right? Because you know that is the rule. Virtual images are upright, right? So virtual images are always upright. But real images, right? Real images, they are inverted. Because the rule is virtual and upright, real images, they are always inverted. Okay? So the correct answer here is, since it's an upright image in this case, a concave mirror can form both. You guys know it, right? It can form real and virtual. But in the shaving, shaving mirror case, it's forming an upright image. So the answer is going to be virtual, right? That's the correct answer because it is virtual and upright. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Fantastic. Let's look at the next question. Which type of mirror is used as a rear view mirror in cars? So guys, you know, in the cars, right on the vehicles, they have this rear view mirror so that you can easily, while driving, you can see what is behind the car, right? The cars or the road behind the car or the vehicle. So what type of mirror is used as a rear view mirror? Come on, is it a plane, concave, convex, or is it none of these? What do you guys think? So Animesh says convex mirror. Uh, Bindu here says convex. What do you guys think? Mandeep Mandal also thinks convex. Right? Even Satya Singh says that. Come on, I want everybody to try. Okay? Excellent, guys. Excellent. So it is actually not a plane mirror. Because a lot of people, you know, when they look at this, they think, oh, you're looking at a plane mirror. The answer is not plane. Because this mirror is slightly curved, very slightly. Right? You can, uh, next time, you know, when you're in a vehicle, you can see, right? In a bus, it's a little more evident because the buses, they have big rear view mirrors. In a car, the rear view mirror is smaller, right? So you can see that the mirror is slightly curved. These types of mirrors are slightly curved. They're slightly curved. So they're clearly curved mirrors, right? Not a plain mirror. So which one is it? Concave or convex? Excellent. The answer is convex. So why do we use a convex mirror? So who can tell me? Why is a convex mirror used? Why not just use a plane mirror, guys? So why do you use a convex mirror? In a car. In the rear view mirror of a car. Why is a convex mirror used? Why not use a plane mirror? Who can tell me? Come on. Excellent. I see Pushkar gave the right answer. Larger field of view. Even Gotham says that. Superb, guys. So that you get a 
larger field of view not magnification you don't want magnification guys very important concept a convex mirror right so if you took take a look at a convex mirror it gives you a greater field of view right so for the driver he gets a wider viewing angle right so if this is the driver here you can see a convex mirror will give what we call as a greater field of view greater field of view okay very important excellent guys excellent because it is a diverging mirror excellent a convex mirror you know is a diverging mirror it gives a greater field of view so or a larger field of view so that you can see more of the road behind you you can see the cars from a more a larger angle all right excellent excellent guys so that's the correct answer let's go to the next question find the angle between the incident and reflected ray in this diagram so come on guys you need to find the angle between the incident ray and reflected ray and i hope all of you have your pen and paper ready right so please draw this diagram and try to work out the answer please don't do the you know questions in physics chemistry and maths you know just mentally please draw the diagram and tell me what will be the answer here okay some of you are saying 30 some of you are saying 60 come on guys decide and i want all of you to participate so what type of mirror is this guys clearly you can see that this is a convex mirror right because this is the uh, this is the non reflecting surface so the mirror is bulging outwards so this is clearly a convex mirror right and what happens to this reflected ray so they are asking the angle between the incident and reflected ray so this is the incident ray guys right it is incident on the mirror and how do we draw the reflected ray so you need to use the uh, laws of reflection right the rules of reflection for con concave and convex mirrors okay so what rule will you apply can you see it is uh, right it is hitting the mirror at the pole right the center of the mirror is called the pole okay and so this obeys a very simple rule that it will reflect off like this okay so it will get reflected like this oops the uh, ray vanished magically right so this is the reflected ray here guys and what does the rule say the rule says that the angle of reflection at the pole right the angle of incidence you guys know that this is the angle of incidence 30 degree and the angle of reflection will also be the same so angle of reflection here is going to be 30 degrees okay because this is the rule please you can read it in your books right that at the pole whether it's a concave or a convex mirror the incident ray when they it hits the pole the angle of incidence equals angle of reflection very important angle i equals angle r i equals r at the pole right so what is the angle between the incident and reflected ray now it should be easy right the angle between the two rays can you see it is going to be 30 plus 30 excellent right 30 plus 30 fantastic i see arjun has the right answer excellent guys very good Arush has the right answer so it's just going to be 30 plus 30 the answer is 60 degrees because this angle we are talking about right the angle between the incident and reflected ray so the angle is going to be basically equal to the one we are interested in it's going to be i plus r i plus r which is 30 plus 30 so our final answer is 60 degrees fantastic awesome let's go to our next question guys which type of mirror or mirrors always forms a virtual image so here you can have multiple answers so come on all of you try and guys if you like our live classes please do check out our website manochaacademy.com i take more live classes there on physics chemistry and maths so do check it out and if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel manocha academy please subscribe right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos or classes okay and guys also hit the like button great to see more than 250 likes for this class i want all of you to hit the like button if you're enjoying the class all right thank you guys thank you thanks a lot come on what is the answer here which type of mirror or mirrors right what do you think always forms a virtual image okay so very good you guys know a plane mirror right so when you you know that when you comb your hair in front of a plane mirror 
you see that always it forms a virtual image. Have you ever seen yourself upright? Because guys, remember, virtual images are always upright. Right? So it's always virtual and upright. So you know that a plane mirror forms a virtual and upright image, right? Okay, concave mirror. This is a special mirror. It can form both. It can form real or virtual images. Okay, so this is not going to be the answer, right? Convex mirror, right? The mirror that we talked about, you know, in our rear view mirror, this guy always forms virtual and upright because the driver doesn't want to see inverted image of the road, right? I mean, there'll be an accident. It will become dangerous. So always in a convex mirror, whether it's in the rear view mirror or the side view mirrors, convex mirror, they always give a virtual image because it's virtual and upright. Do you guys agree? So excellent, excellent, right? So the answer, it won't be all of these guys. The answer is going to be A and C here. Okay, very good. I see Neville also has the right answer here, A and C, right? Okay, very good guys. A and C. Right, Swati also has the correct answer. So it is plane mirror and convex mirror that can form virtual and upright image. Okay, both these mirrors and they always, always give a virtual image. And this one too, always. Okay, so convex mirror is the simple one in the syllabus. It always gives a virtual and upright image. Excellent, let's go to our next question. Focal length of a convex mirror is given to us as 15 centimeters. Now the question says, what is the distance between the focus and the center of curvature? And guys, if you get questions like this, what, what is the first thing you should do? Please draw a diagram. Please vis visualize physics with a diagram. Okay, so I'm going to draw a diagram here since it says convex mirror. Okay, I'm not a great artist. So, you know, just uh, excuse me if my diagram isn't that great. But let's sketch it out here. So this is a convex mirror and this is the back portion, right? That's the back side of the mirror. Okay. And always remember to draw the principal axis here. So guys, you know that this point is going to be the pole, right? The center of the mirror. Now, where will the focus lie on the left side or the right side for a convex mirror guys? So, you know, we have drawn a convex mirror here. Okay. Where will the focus lie for this mirror? On the left or on the right? What do you guys think? Come on, all of you try. Very good. Great to see the response. Everyone's trying the answers here. Excellent. Excellent. Right? So here, very good. The, it will lie on the right because you know that this mirror, it curves like this, right? So that's why it's called a spherical mirror because it's part of this big sphere. So what is the center of the sphere called or the mirror? It's called, you know, the center of curvature. So guys, do you agree? The center of curvature is going to lie here. I'll write pole over here, P, right? The center of the mirror, center of curvature will be here, right? And the focus will be exactly between the P and C, the pole and the center of curvature. Clear? All right. So now what have we, what have we been given? Focal length, right? Focal length F is given as 15 centimeters. So F is given to us as 15 centimeters. Focal length means the distance from pole to focus. Okay. So distance from pole to focus is given to us as 15 centimeters. Do you guys agree? Right. And what do we need to find here? The distance between the focus and center of curvature. So guys, please clearly mark it in your diagram. We need to find this distance between F and C. So see now the visualization is so easy. If you have drawn a diagram, guys, please draw a diagram in physics. It's all about visualization. Okay. So what do you think is the answer going to be here? Awesome. Awesome to see the response. Okay. So Tanish is saying 15. What do you guys think? Shivam is also saying 15. Right. Sia Sharma is saying 15. What do you guys think? So what is the important rule here? You guys know that the focus F lies exactly between P and C, right? It lies exactly between the pole and center of curvature. Guys, you know that this distance equals this distance, right? Okay. So we have not been asked radius of curvature. We have been asked the distance between F and C. So very simple answer because the focus lies exactly in the center of P and C. So therefore the distance, right? So we can say therefore, so here guys, we can say that FC, this distance equals PF, right? 
because F is exactly in the center and PF is the focal length which we know is 15. So the distance between F and C, right, which we are calling as FC here is also going to be 15. Excellent. I see Yash has the correct answer here. Jeba has the right answer. Fantastic guys. 15. So slightly tricky question. Don't go for, you guys know this relation. Don't go for that. We are not talking about R equals 2F, not the radius of curvature. Okay. So we are just talking of the distance F between F and C here. Excellent guys. Excellent. Next question. Which type of mirror obeys the laws of reflection? Is it the plane mirror, concave mirror, convex mirror, or is it all of these? So which ones obey the laws of reflection? And guys, you know, remember what are the laws of reflection? So one is the uh, long law, right? The incident ray, the reflected ray, the normal. Remember that law? The incident ray. So I don't think I'm going to write that whole thing here. Incident ray, reflected ray, right? And the normal at the point of incidence all lie, you know, at the point of incidence. They all lie on the same plane. Remember, all lie on the same plane. So that is the first law. And what does the second law say? Law of reflection. Does anybody remember? What is the second law of reflection? Angle of incidence, right? Angle of incidence equals. So this is a simple one. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Now, which mirror obeys the laws of reflection? So all of you know that plane mirror obeys it, right? We know that the plane mirror obeys the laws of reflection. But the interesting part is that even a concave and convex mirror obey, right? So whenever light falls on a concave or convex mirror, right? So let's say you take a concave mirror, whichever mirror you take, right? When light falls on it, right? So let's say light falls this way, concave mirror is converging, right? So let's say this is the just a rough diagram. If that's the incident ray, this is the reflected ray then you can always draw the normal and you will always have angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection. Guys, please remember this. So all the mirrors, the plane mirror, the concave, the convex, which are called, you know, the curved or the spherical mirrors, they're together known as the curved or spherical mirrors. They all obey the laws of reflection. So it's not only for plane mirror. Excellent. Excellent. So I see, uh, Cecil Judson has the correct answer. Uh, Farhan Akhtar has the right answer here. Excellent, guys. So the answer will be D, all of these, because all these mirrors, whether it's plane or the spherical mirrors, the concave or convex mirror, they all obey the laws of reflection. Great. Next question, guys. If the magnification is two in a mirror, which one of the image, which one is the image of the boy? So here's the, the real boy here, right? above my head here you can see so this is the uh, the picture of the boy here right so can you see this is the picture of the boy and the boy is acting like the object here and what is the question saying the magnification of a mirror is given as two so which one do you think is the going to be the image the boy will see which one will match is it going to be the picture a the picture b c or d what do you guys think and if you guys are enjoying this quiz please hit the like button right now and do share it with your friends. Okay. So guys, I'd like all of you to hit the like button if you're finding this quiz useful and beneficial and please, you know, share it out with your friends. So come on guys, try this. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot. And what will be the answer here? So magnification is given as two, right? So what does this number mean? Magnification guys, you know, magnification is basically image height, which you know, you can write as HI, right? So magnification, the number magnification is basically image height divided by the object height. Or we can represent that as H dash by H, where H dash symbolizes the image height divided by the object height H. Okay. So here you can see, we can substitute the number it's given to us as two. So what does this tell us? That the image height HI is basically two times the object height HO, right? If you cross multiply, do you guys agree? Okay. So from this uh, equation, we know that the image is twice, two times the object height, right? So it can't be A or B, right? Because A or B is the same size. So it's not going to be this. So is it going to be C or D? So as we'll discuss, you know, magnification has a sign. 
if it's positive so here it's given 2 means plus 2 so if it's positive that means the image will be upright right because it's plus 2 had it been minus 2 it would have been this one right it would have been this inverted image had it been minus 2 so the answer the correct answer here is C the answer is going to be C here very good I see Lina Tiwari has the right answer here and uh, very good uh, Neela has the correct answer it's going to be C because magnification is plus 2 okay so can you see the boy is over here in this picture the boy is upright because minus 2 means inverted the boy is upright and twice right the magnification is twice so he's two times in size in the uh, in the height in the mirror and it's plus two so it is an upright image fantastic guys great let's go to our next question is it clear now let's try this one for a concave mirror where should the object be placed for the image to be inverted and same size as the object so if you take a concave mirror here as you can see in this picture it's a concave mirror right so this is a concave mirror where should the object be placed so where should you place the object to get an inverted and to get an image which is inverted and same size as the object what do you guys think so is it at infinity center of curvature focus or between pole and focus awesome to see the participation here great to see that guys awesome okay some of you are saying center of curvature some of you are saying at the focus what do you guys think come on I want everybody to he try here please participate and guys as I said we have also started a Hindi classes just from yesterday on our Manocha Academy Hindi channel so guys you please subscribe to that also if you're interested in classes in Hindi it's called Manocha Academy Hindi you can search for that on YouTube and subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll be continuing the live classes in English here also so both of the channels you can subscribe if you want in both English and Hindi awesome guys so what do you think will be the answer here so uh, this one is that special case right that you know that in a concave mirror here right this was a concave mirror if you place the object okay if you're going to place the object exactly at the center of curvature so these are our points right C F and P if you place the object exactly at the center of curvature you know that you're going to get the image which is going to be same size but inverted guys if this is the object you, uh, a b let me mark it as a b you know the image here is going to be a dash b dash same size but inverted okay so the correct answer here guys is at the center of curvature fantastic very good right i see uh, rohit as the correct answer here b is the correct answer very good okay so the correct answer here will be b and guys how to draw the ray diagram please practice ray diagrams it's very important so one is you can of course use you know the rules for example here you'll use a rule that you'll draw a ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection it passes through the focus remember so you can draw that rule and uh, then uh, you can use that rule and the ray passing through the focus after reflection will be parallel to the principal axis but for this special diagram you can use a, a cheating trick right because you know where the image is going to be formed for this diagram don't use the rules guys okay there's a nice trick i'm going to tell you so what is the trick of drawing the ray diagram for this question right how do you draw so trick for ray diagram so what do you guys are going to do first draw the image of the same size inverted and at the center of curvature it's exactly going to be at the center of curvature now you guys draw the rules uh, draw the rays sorry okay so don't have to use the rules now if you just draw the rays you know that it's going to hit here and it's going to get reflected pass through the focus okay and same thing here right so you guys can and don't forget to draw the arrows you know mark the arrows for the rays and here again uh, you can draw this uh, other ray will look something like this okay so it will pass through the focus here and after reflection it will go like this right so in this you can use this trick because you know where the image is going to be formed 
first draw the image then draw the rays because it's very hard to get it accurate you know if you start drawing the rays you your image may not hit ex uh, may not uh, lie exactly at the center of curvature and then it will be marked wrong okay so here you can use this nice trick for this ray diagram all right guys let's go to our next question by sign convention focal length of a concave mirror is considered to be positive negative no sign or zero come on guys what do you guys think and great to see 400 likes thank you guys thanks a lot it's all due to your love and support and it's awesome to read everybody's comments we read all the comments that you guys write so thanks a lot guys here for your support and please try the next question so by sign convention so what is this sign convention so let me teach you in a very simple way so how do you understand the sign convention whether it's a concave or convex mirror so guys what do you do for the sign convention simply draw the x and y axis you know coordinate geometry if you don't know just search for coordinate geometry on Ocha Academy okay and watch my video on that uh, so I have a video on coordinate geometry also so in coordinate geometry guys you know you have this x and y axis so we are going to draw them here right so simply draw the x axis x x dash right the negative x axis the positive y is the positive right this is the positive y axis and the negative y dash here right okay can you see that right so draw these axes one important thing is the origin you know where these axes meet is the origin that should coincide with the pole right so can you see here guys the origin and pole are the same point so make sure you draw your x and y axis where the origin is exactly at the pole whether it's a concave or convex mirror okay now what does the question say so first you draw the axis all right now the question is saying focal length of the mirror right so what is the definition of focal length focal length is the distance from the pole to the focus you guys know this so the distance from the pole to this focus do you guys agree this is called the focal length and now look at this uh, sign convention the axis that we've drawn because sign convention says that uh, just like distances object distance image distance focal length these all have a sign so what will the sign be is it in the positive direction or the negative and please remember you're measuring the distance from the pole to the focus not focus to pole all the distances are measured from the pole okay please remember that so i should put the arrow like this you know the focal distance is here from the pole to the focus right so this is our focal length and guys what is the focal length right can you see very good it's negative because can you see it's along the negative x-axis guys it's along this negative direction this is the negative direction uh, in the x-axis this is the positive similarly y-axis also has positive negative right so can you guys see that the focal length from P to F is along the negative x-axis fantastic right so the correct answer here is going to be B it's going to be concave mirror always has negative focal length convex mirror has positive because you know a convex mirror the focus lies on the right side awesome guys let's go to our next question an object of height 10 centimeters forms a real image of height 4 centimeters in a spherical mirror you need to calculate the magnification so come on guys please try here I want everybody to try and sorry guys if I'm not able to take each and everyone's name here but I'm con continuously looking at the chat here and great to see your response so come on what do you think will be the answer here please try okay Kirit says B right what are you guys saying Mohammed says A what do you guys think here Amit is saying B I want everybody to try here so what is the magnif we want to find magnification and guys you know magnification as a formula magnification which we denote by M just like we discussed magnification is basically image height okay image height divided by the object height image height divided by object height H I by H O please remember that or some of you may have learned it like H dash by H same thing H dash by H where H I or H dash these are the image heights the ones I've written in blue so image height right so it's a ratio of the image height by the object height clear simple formula 
Now please uh, go ahead and uh, write down the values. So what are the values? The object height is given to us as 10 centimeters. Okay. Always guys, please write down the values, the data clearly. So can you see object height given to you is, uh, sorry, 10 centimeters, right? This one, an object of height 10 centimeters. So I'll use this formula H dash by H. So H is given to us as uh, 10 centimeters here. All right. And what is the image height given to us? Height of the image, right? It forms a real image of height 4 centimeters. So H dash is given to us as 4 centimeters. Okay. So is, uh, is it going to be 4? But one important thing, guys, we always have to think about the sign convention. So object, you know, is always upright. Object is usually not inverted unless given in the question. So clearly the object height is going to be just plus 10, right? Or simply 10. Okay. So all of you agree the object height is because object is upright, right? It is upright. So it is plus 10. But what about the image? It says a real image is formed, right? So very good. Jay already saying the real image, right? Uh, it will be negative, right? Do you guys agree? Right? The real image will be negative uh, height. Why? Because a real image a real image is always inverted, real and inverted, right? The image given to us is real. Please read it carefully. Real image is always inverted. So H dash is going to be minus four. Why? Because it is an inverted image. Why is it inverted? Because it's a real image. Real image is always inverted. Now use this formula and see what you guys get. Okay. So Anil Mishra is getting minus 0.4. What are you guys getting? So come on. All of you, please try. So M equals H dash by H, H dash by H. And you just need to substitute these values, right? And so what is that going to be? So H dash is minus four centimeters, minus four centimeters divided by plus 10 centimeters. Okay. And guys, the units will cancel, right? It's the units simply cancel off and you're getting minus four by 10. Please check my calculation, right? So have I done the right thing here? Please check because object is always upright. So it's positive in height. Image is a real image. It's given to us. It's negative in height. Excellent. I see Pragati also has minus 0.4. Very good. Okay. All of you are getting the right answer, right? Sanya Sheikh also has very good. So the answer is going to be minus 0.4 here. Excellent. Because it is M equals four minus four by 10. So our answer is minus 0.4, right? This is the magnification clear. Let's go to our next question. So please guys, don't forget the sign convention. Very, very important. And it can be used for the distances as well as the heights here. So here we are basically using the Y axis, right? Anything upright is positive. This inverted is negative. That's why we did this here. Awesome. Awesome guys. Great going. And let's try our next question here. So what does this say? An object of size five centimeters is placed at a distance of 20 centimeters from a concave mirror. Okay. Of focal length, 15 centimeters. So it's a slightly long question. At what distance from the mirror should a screen be placed to get, a, to get the sharp image? Also calculate the size of the image. So come on, I want all of you to try. Let's make it, I'm going to make this uh, complicated question really simple for you. Okay. So how do you make it simple? First of all, please draw a diagram. Okay. So I've got this picture here of the concave mirror. You need to sketch this rough diagram. It's very important. All right. So please draw this diagram first and let's see what we can do here. So we have been given an object of size five centimeter. All right. Is placed at a distance of 20 centimeters, right? So object of size five centimeters. So let's quickly write that down. So that means the object height H is five. Always think, is it going to be plus five or minus five? You know that an object is always upright, right? Okay. So uh, we can say that the object height will be plus five centimeters. And also let's draw the rough diagram, right? So let's place our object here. So it's at placed at a distance of 20 centimeters. So it's placed, you know, somewhere here, right? because the focal length given to us is 15 centimeters. Okay. So guys, you can see here the focal length, which is this distance from P to F is given to us as 15 
and the object is placed uh, at distance of 20 centimeters from the mirror. So this is 20. Okay, so let's write down uh, that thing. Uh, let's write down the data and please uh, don't forget the sign convention. Okay, so guys remember, you know, you need to draw your axis here. This is going to be the axis or let me use, you know, a different color here for the axis. So what is our axis going to look like here? So we have these axes here, right? All right. So that's our X, X dash, Y, Y dash, right? Oops, I'm hiding the Y dash there. Can you guys see it? So please draw the axis and work with that. Okay. So please work with the, uh, uh, with these axes for your sign convention. So H is clearly on the positive Y axis. So H is plus five centimeters, the object height. Okay. What is the focal length going to be guys? So focal length is given to us as 15 centimeters. So please write down the data. So is it positive or negative? So F is 15, but you can see that the focal length is along the negative X axis. Can you see? It's along the negative X axis. So the focal length guys is going to be, what is it going to be here? Please note it's along the negative X axis minus 15 centimeters. Okay. And what about the object distance? So object distance given to us is 20 centimeters, right? Okay. So H is the, uh, symbolizes the object height. F is the focal length, right? And here we have been given the object distance, which we call is as U. Okay. U is the symbol used here. So U is going to be minus 20 again, because can you guys see that it's along the negative X axis from P to the object. Okay. Very good. So minus 20 centimeters. All of you clear about this thing? We are using the sign convention here. So for all your data that you're writing for these sums, okay, we need to write down the, this data with the correct sign. Of course, you can solve this uh, question by ray diagram, but usually we will go for the mirror formula. We are not solving it using ray diagram. We're going to solve this question using the mirror formula. Okay. So let's go ahead and use, do you guys know what is the mirror formula? We have written this data and one more thing, we need to find at what distance from the mirror the screen should be placed to get a sharp image. That means we want to find the image distance. So let's call that V. And for image distance, since it is unknown, we don't have to take the sign. We are just going to put a question mark. Okay. So what is the mirror formula guys? So you don't have to draw a ray diagram, just draw this rough diagram and we are going to do it with the mirror formula. So you guys know what is the mirror formula? It's basically one by F, right? Have you seen this mirror formula? One by F equals one by V plus one by U. This is called the mirror formula. All right. Okay. So go ahead and use this formula and please substitute the values here and work it out, right? What will it be? So this is basically going to be one by minus 15 because focal length is minus 15. Uh, v we need to find. So that's going to be one by V and plus uh, this is going to be one by minus 20, right? Because U is uh, minus 20 here. So please substitute with the correct sign. So I'm getting this, please check, right? In case I'm making any mistake here, because I'm also solving it live here. So go ahead. Very good. I see Tanish has written the correct formula. So this is called the mirror formula guys. And I want all of you to calculate this and try. So come on guys, please try. Awesome to see the response. Excellent guys. Okay, so please go ahead and try this question. And what do we get here? So basically uh, we will get that uh, you have one by V. So how do you solve this? You bring one by V on uh, this side and basically we are getting uh, minus one by 15, right? So one by V is gonna be minus one by 15 plus one by 20, right? Because if you move it to the other side, you'll get a plus there. Right. And so if you guys solve this, what will you get here? Please uh, calculate it. So you just have to take the LCM. So the LCM is going to be 60 here. This is going to be basically minus four plus three is what I'm getting, right? One by V. So therefore we are getting one by V equals minus one by 60. So what is V guys or V equals minus 60 centimeters. Are you guys getting this? Please check. Awesome. I see 
Jude has the right answer. Binod has the right answer. Excellent. Minus 60. Don't forget the units. Physics units are very important. Centimeters. Can you see I've written here? Minus 60 centimeters. Okay. So that is V, our image distance. Guys, we have found the image distance using our mirror formula here. 1 by F equals 1 by V plus 1 by U. You didn't have to draw a ray diagram. Clear? So this is the answer. Now, what is the meaning of minus 60 centimeters? Okay. So you can write it. Uh, uh, so you can write this down. You've been given minus 60 centimeters. That means is it in front of the mirror or behind the mirror? So we can write it in a sentence form, right? So this means image is formed, right? 60 centimeters. Will it be in front or behind? Guys, because minus 60, that means clearly the image is going to be formed this side, right? Along the negative x axis. That means in front of the mirror. All right. So it's going to be formed 60 centimeters in front of the mirror. Right. That is our answer here. So you can write it also. Please write it in sentence form, right? Because that we are analyzing. So rather than writing left, very good. Some of you are saying left. Don't say left here. Say in front of the mirror and right will be behind the mirror if it was formed on the right. Do you guys agree? So yes, very good. I see Shri Hari is saying in front of the mirror. Excellent. Soma Paul also says that. Very good, guys. And what is the last part left? Also calculate the size of the image. So is this crystal clear, guys? So just, you know, write down the data with the correct sign, write down the mirror formula, substitute, and it's so easy. And guys, please make sure you draw this diagram. Very, very important to draw a rough diagram without any rays. Why? Because we are using mirror formula. So draw a rough diagram, mark the rough data there, draw the X and Y axis as I've shown you here, right? This coordinate axis, very important, which is centered at the pole. Decide your signs based on that. Just substitute and solve. Very simple. Okay. And the last part, let's do that on our next slide. We need to find the size of the image. Okay. So size of the image means we need to calculate what is H dash, right? We are interested in the size of the image here h dash for the same question. Now, what is the important formula? We are going to use the magnification formula, guys. Magnification, you know, uh, as we had discussed, magnification is basically h dash by h, the image height by object height. But that's also, guys, that is also equal to minus v by u, right? It's also equal to minus v by u. Very important. There's a connection between the magnification, the h dash by h, and the image and object distance. V is the image distance. This is not velocity, right? V is image distance, U is object distance. So guys, please use this formula and uh, we can easily find out the image height. Why? Because we know the object height. You saw we have written previously, object height was plus five centimeters. So we know everything. H is plus five centimeters. The uh, object distance was given to us. Can you see? Object is 20 centimeters in front. So U was minus 20 with the correct sign. And what is V? We have calculated V. V is, uh, right? So V is minus 60, right? As we calculated, V was minus 60 centimeters here. So now we just have to substitute this in this uh, formula, right? So we are going to get H dash by divided by H is five, right? So five and that equals, don't forget the minus sign, minus V by U. So minus V. So V is uh, minus 60 here. So we are going to plug in minus 60 for V. Okay. And divided by U is minus 20. Do you guys agree? So please don't forget the sign here. Please check it. Okay. So minus V by U. Right. And now go ahead and uh, use these values here. So H dash by H equals minus V by U. And uh, basically this minus sign will cancel off, right? And this will also get canceled, uh, the zero. So we are basically going to get H dash by five, right? So we get H dash by five is minus three. Are you guys getting that? Please check my calculations in case, you know, I make some mistake here. So minus three, right? Awesome. Gotham has got minus three. Excellent. Not three guys, minus three, right? And so what is the final answer? You just uh, take five on the other side and therefore we are getting H dash equals minus 15 centimeters is our answer here. Are you guys getting that? 
minus 15, right? So what does this tell you about the image, right? The image height is minus 15, right? So image, uh, image height is basically, we can say 15. So image height is 15 centimeters and it is the minus sign tells you it is inverted and it is inverted, right? Because it is along the negative x axis. Please remember the axis were like this, right? These are our axes, right? So x axis, x dash, and you have y and y dash, right? So the image is formed, it is inverted and it's formed along the negative x axis. That means a uh, negative y axis, sorry. So it is inverted. Very good. I see a lot of you have written uh, minus 15 centimeters. Srihari has the correct answer. Don't forget centimeters, guys. Don't forget the units. Awesome. Great to see you guys are enjoying. Please hit the like button right now. If you haven't hit it already, we'll be at 500 likes, I think. Awesome, guys. Is it clear? So this is how you do it. Draw the diagram, write down the formula and substitute. It will be very simple for you. Awesome. Great. And here's the final question for you, which is going to be the homework question. Thanks, guys. We are over 500 likes. Thanks a lot for your love and support. And here's the last question. A spherical mirror gives a magnification of minus four. Now, what does this number tell us? Is the image real and diminished? Or is it virtual and diminished? Or is it real and magnified? Or is it virtual and magnified? What do you guys think? And I'm not going to tell you this answer here because I want all of you to think and try and do write your answer in the comments below and I'll definitely reply to it as soon as possible. So guys, please try this question. Interesting question. We have been given the magnification is minus four. What does this tell us about the number? The magnification number, it's a very important question. Often it's asked. And I told you in this class, I'm going to discuss some really important questions that will help you clear the concepts and you know for you to do better in your tests so please try this question and please write your answer in the comments below because i won't give you the answer right now i want everybody to try and uh, guys as i said do check out our website manochacademy.com uh, you know i take uh, more live classes over there we have interactive videos quizzes and questions and you get direct replies from me so definitely guys do check out our website we have these full courses for physics chemistry and maths uh, on our uh, website uh, for uh, cbsc class 9 and 10 and for icsc class 9 and guys do share it out with your friends okay so thanks a lot hope you enjoyed this class and please hit the like button and also don't forget to hit the subscribe and uh, button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos or live classes and i'll keep taking these uh, uh, you know, uh, classes on our Manocha Academy English channel, this Manocha Academy channel. And I've also started uh, Hindi live classes if you guys are interested on Manocha Academy Hindi. So you guys can search for Manocha Academy Hindi and hit the subscribe and uh, notification bell and do share that out with your friends. So I'll be taking, you know, some, uh, probably there'll be a Hindi class tomorrow or day after. Okay. So guys, if you're interested in that, do sign up for that. Awesome guys. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed the class and uh, do take care of your health thanks a lot yes thank you it's like 525 likes awesome guys great to uh, see the response hope you found this class useful and helped you revise many many important concepts and uh, i'm sure you guys will do well just keep studying keep the momentum going and all of you please work hard i know this is a difficult time but it's an opportunity to learn and uh, please take care of your health you know keep a balanced life don't be just studying or don't be you know just relaxing keep a good balance you know that's always my suggestion keep a good balance and i'm sure all of you guys will do well thanks a lot for joining in the live class so this is sandeep manocha signing off and see you in the next live class whether we have it on our english channel manocha academy or the hindi channel i want you guys to be there and do share it out with your friends Thanks a lot for joining. Oh, and don't forget, you know, I mentioned, uh, so don't forget to do this uh, homework question. And guys, when you're having lunch or dinner or your breakfast, please pick up that spoon, right? It is the best example of the concave mirror that you have at your home. And you know the best part? It has both a concave side and a convex side, right? You have a concave mirror, the front portion and a convex, okay? So carefully look at the image that's formed in the mirror and I'm sure that will help you remember many things because remember convex mirror always gives an upright image, the back portion and the front one can give an upright 
or a inverted because it can form both real and virtual images. Awesome guys, awesome. Great to see the response and see you in the next live class and do share it with your friends. Thanks a lot guys. The live classes I take at 8 p.m. right? So some of you are asking when are the classes? They are at 8 p.m. on our uh, both the channels right? Manocha Academy or Manocha Academy Hindi. All right guys, take care. Uh, bye bye. I'll sign off here and all of you have a great day. Bye.